Um, hey, everybody. My guest today is Hannah Cruz. Hannah is currently starring in the Jason Robert Brown, Jonathan Mark Sherman production of The Connector, directed by Daisy Prince at Manhattan Class Company. Some of her other theater credits include Only Gold, Suffs, the national tour of Hamilton, where she played, what's Eliza? That's it. Eliza. <laughs> Just... um. A supporting role bullets over broadway the da vinci code and young frankenstein you can find her on instagram as this is hannah cruz but today you can find her on my podcast hannah hello hi alana how are you i'm so happy you're here you were saying that you listen to the podcast and that makes me so unbelievably happy do you even remember how you found it back in the day yes because i am a huge Patti LuPone fan and I listen to almost every podcast she does and so that was what initially led me into your feed and then from there it was like listening to Ben Platt and listening to I remember listening to Michael Yuri's episode and then later talking with him about it and it, it's just wild to have gone from listening as like a fan of people and then going on to work with people. And it's like a very heady thing. Um, but I always like, I love hearing about actors process and it's, it feels like super, um, it helps me feel a part of the community when I hear other people talk about their process. Cause it shows you that like, there's not one way to skin a cat and you can, learn from other people and take little things and add them to your own. And yeah, I find it fascinating. I feel that way too. That is exactly, I felt like, how do I share all the amazing like backstage dressing room conversations that I wish I had had access to when I was starting out with people who I imagined like were born and became stars. Like in my mind as a girl yeah. in Teenic, I was like, well, that's obviously how it happens. Um, and so hearing from people who every story is such a remarkably different journey. I agree. Like it really is um, comforting in that way. And I also feel like for me, it's just a cheat. Like I get to ask people about their process and then I go to work and I'm like, I have this catalog of like ways to work from my most beloved inspirational friends and guests. So now Hannah Cruz, you are a part of that library and I'm so thrilled. I just got to see you the other night in The Connector. Jason Robert Brown and Jonathan Mark Sherman have both been on this show and I feel like they are two incredibly uniquely eccentric humans. And the idea of them yeah. working together and putting those unique brains together with Daisy Prince at the helm. Um, it was very special to watch. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the show, how you became a part of it. And then we're going to go back in time to other things that you've done that kind of bring us back here today, experiencing the meta of it all. <laughs> yeah, I, I had never... Obviously, I'm a huge Jason Robert Brown fan, massive. I did last five years in high school. Songs for a New World was like what I grew up listening to. I Bridges of Madison County is actually my favorite score of all time. It's just perfect. And so I, I just got an audition from my team for The Connector. And I remember looking and the audition song was Cassandra, which is Robin's like big song. And it's like 17 pages. And the audition was all 17 pages, including the interlude. And I was like, okay. And at the time I was doing a reading of Suffs and just about to go to Puerto Rico for my fiance's closing of Hamilton. And I was like shoving a lot into a little bit of time, which is always how it goes. And they were like, can you film a self tape for this? Like before you leave and the day I had to film the self tape, we had a reading presentation and Jason Robert Brown came and he sat like in the front row, like right in front of my music stand. Um, and <laughs> I was like, well, I guess this is also part of the audition. And the reading went well and he came up and I think he gave me a fist bump after and introduced himself. And then I went home and taped my audition. And uh, he went on to tell me that, that like, 
it all worked in, in like a congruous way. Like it, it all went on one on top of the other. Like it worked out the timing. And then I did end up going in in person and it just felt really warm, the room. Like I felt it's the most comfortable I've ever felt in an audition. And I do think it's like the best audition I've ever had. <laughs> And there's something about Sherm's writing too. I, I don't always feel like this, but Robin just fit very naturally in my voice and in my body. And I felt, I loved doing the scenes. I just love them. And I love doing them nightly now. So it really felt like, uh, like planets aligning and, uh, and like it was the way it was supposed to happen. There was never like a doubt in my mind that I was gonna do it. Like once I did the material the first time, I was like, oh yeah, this is, I think this is mine. And if it doesn't end up being mine, so be it. But it just felt really natural. And um, the process of creating it in the room with them was really interesting because I've been a part of a lot of new things. And it, it and there's so many changes going on every single day because they're new and because we're figuring out on these bodies on this stage with this set with this team but this show daisy from the jump because they've been working on it for so long she knew exactly what she wanted like design sound look all of it and so while there have been like little changes it's been the smoothest preview process i've ever been a part of Everybody knows what they want. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody loves the story that we're telling. And it's so, it's like calming. I was really nervous before the final dress. And after that, it's just been like, the nerves aren't really there anymore. It's just like more of a, of like a chomping at the bit to get to do it again. Um, yeah, I, I really, I really love the show. I think it's something really special. Wow. Well, everything you just said came through as an audience member, but I wonder for folks who haven't seen it yet or might not get to see this version of it in New York, because people live all over the world who listen to this, can you give a brief synopsis? Um, maybe I should have started with this. I'm <laughs> really not on my A game today. Um, no, no, no. Tell us about the connector, the story. Yeah. So... The Connector is takes place in 1997, 1996 and 1997 at this fictional magazine called The Connector in New York. And I play uh, Robin Martinez, who is a copy editor at The Connector. She loves The Connector. She's been getting it at, she is from Fort Worth, Texas. She's been getting it in the mail there since she was a kid. She's wanted to come to New York and write for this magazine since she was a child. And so she is working at the connector and one day this, this kid, Ethan Dobson comes in and he's just graduated from Princeton and he just has written a story for them. And Conrad O'Brien played by Scott Bakula, the editor in chief finds this kid's story and is like, you're great. Why don't you come write for us? And then it's about Ethan's rise at the magazine in contrast to Robin's struggle to be noticed at the magazine because she is a woman and it's in the 90s and no one's reading her writing really even like as much as she tries and then there are there is Muriel played by Jessica Malaski who is the fact checker and there is um at the connector and then there is Mona Bland played by my Linda who is uh, a woman who writes in these uh, letters to the editor, uh, give kind of eccentric, giving little, like uh, little suggestions about errors she's seen in the magazine, and it's a story of of a comp of a magazine in the '90s being taken over by a corporation, and these people who work at the magazine trying to stay afloat and do what they have to do to stay alive and be noticed at the magazine. And it's like hard to give a synopsis of this show because I don't want to give anything away. Well, I totally appreciate that. And I, and I saw, you know, I said to Jonathan, like, I feel like you wrote, I mean, it's a musical, but, but the book, like 
a love letter for our daughters, right? Sort of a, a, a play for our daughters. This idea that here is this, and, and, and sadly, just ringing so true now, right? Like the more things change, the more things stay the same. Because when you watch this show, we immediately meet Robin, the character Hannah plays that she's just described. And, you know, it'll feel very familiar, like a magazine office and things are buzzing and people are running around and, and bringing in new ideas and trying to get the editor to notice them and get excited about their work. And it's so clear from the start that Robin is like the voice we should be listening to. She's smart, she's engaged, she's really interested in the world and she's a really hard worker. And then this little hotshot walks in with like a cool story and he becomes the star overnight. And mm -hmm. it is unclear at the beginning if it will be deserved or not. There are prodigies who come in and sometimes people skip the line because they're really uniquely gifted. And sometimes they skip the line because um, they're cheating, right? I mean, there's all sorts of ways in which this happens, but it is so painful to, from moment one, meet our narrator, protagonist, star, Robin, and know that she deserves everything and is getting nothing. And it is just this, this men's club, right, that exists mm -hmm. in so many workplaces. And it was really wild to see um, the heartbreak that you are so beautifully being able to portray without ever asking for sympathy or pandering to the audience, but just like we get to see in real time, like here's the person who deserves it and here's the shiny penny that she's being passed over for. And that was my experience mm -hmm. of it. And, and it does, I mean, I'm thinking back to this audition and I feel like, wow, that's a lot to ask of someone who has not yet been hired to do a show, to do their <laughs> entire, like to do an entire um 17 page it was both singing and scene work at the time or yeah. just this right yeah. and um is that normal in your experience to do so much material before you're even in the room with the creators yeah <laughs> that's yeah. your life I mean it's gotten it's not every audition but I will say um learning like whole songs now is like pretty common with like at least two scenes on top and i'm just like i'm kind of uh i've kind of given myself over to it now sometimes there's time to like to do it really thoroughly and sometimes there's just not and i I'm, i've become more okay with the not and being like okay well i'm gonna maybe have to hold the page which i'm, I'm gonna hold the page regardless but i may have to look at the page more Right. And even in like the audition for Connector, I, I, I there, no part of me had Cassandra memorized. I was in that music because it's, it's just, it's really hard. It's Jason Robert Brown is really hard, but I think he, he knows that he gets that. Yeah. It took me a long time to get that song in my body. So there's grace. There's grace in, in oh, yeah. the receiving of it as well as in the, in the doing of it. Um, I, you know, in knowing that we were going to do this today, um, and Jonathan Mark Sherman was really like, Hannah, you should have Hannah and she loves your show. And I was like, okay. So he, I mean, you have amazing press, but also, you know, Jonathan Mark Sherman may get a percentage of this, just so you know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Um, I saw that you sort of went right from like high school to touring with a show. And so I want to just go back because you were really young to kind of embark on this career. So you were 18 when you went on your first national tour. Yeah, I um, I was really a big theater kid, obsessed with musical theater. I grew up in Connecticut, so I would come into the city all the time to see stuff. I had right. on my door to my childhood bedroom, just like every understudy slip from every playbill. Like I was obsessed. And why, why the understudy slip, do you think? I don't even know. I don't even know. I think I loved having those names up there in the same way that like I would get my poster signed after every show. And I had those all over my wall. I just like seeing like the names of the people who were doing the thing that I wanted to do. Because like, here's the example of all the people who do it. And uh, so I I knew I knew for a very long time what I wanted to do. And like, I had there was no question in my mind so my senior year I auditioned at 10 musical theater schools 
bless my mom she took me to every audition and uh I only got into one and it like really broke my heart I got into Ithaca and I was like okay let's go I sent my deposit I got my Ithaca sweatshirt all that and then I was doing Gypsy as my senior year high school show and I was playing Mama Rose and uh and I it was a time when like all the University of Michigan kids like Andrew Keenan Bolger were like posting all these blogs and like these and I was obsessed with them and so I I started posting all my stuff on YouTube and the Rose's turn that I did ended up going viral for the time I think viral now is like millions of views viral for that time was like maybe 40,000 but for me that was huge and uh Playbill did an article about it and Andrew Keenan Bolger like helped bolster it (laughs) and uh I ended up getting an audition for the Legally Blonde national tour. It was like a, the non-union second national tour. And I, my mom took me to the audition and it went really well. And they were like, can she come back tomorrow? And my mom was like, no, she has school. And so I cut school and I had my best friend drive me in because I didn't have a license still though. And um, I booked it and I convinced my parents to let me go. They trusted that, like, I knew what what the right decision was. And so instead of going to school, I went on the road at 18 with that tour. And looking back now, there's just, it was just wild. Because it was non-union, we were at a different city. We played, like, 246 cities in, in nine months. It was really crazy. But I learned a lot. And after the tour... I don't know if he would remember this, but the director was Mark Bruni. And he, I asked him if he thought I should go to college because I had deferred or if I should move to the city. And he was like, I think you should move to the city. So I did. I moved here at 19 and I've been here ever since. And there's been like a lot of hard years in between of like figuring out who I was and I didn't get that college time. So I like partied a lot in the city, which is why I'm almost three years sober now because it was I got all that out when I first moved here and um it's been like I think a lot of people are seeing me now and are like (laughs) I've heard actually a lot being in the connector now a lot of people are like where have you been like who are you and I'm like I've been here for a long time (laughs) but you know everybody has their own journey but uh, I'll be making my Broadway debut now after almost 14 years in the city later this year. And it, it just feels like, it just feels really wild. With um, Suffs. Yeah. With Which I got to see at the public and what an incredible thing to get to revisit that incredibly powerful piece. Yeah. And also yeah. for you to know your next job, like how often has that been the case for you and isn't that the best oh my gosh it's it's like a security like I've never experienced before it's like this year has been an interesting one because I started it off from like January to June not having any work auditioning constantly not having any work and then once I got Da Vinci Code I got Da Vinci Code and then I knew I'd connect her and then I knew I had subs so like I've been like in a cushy position for a couple months now, which is like very nice. It's busy, which yeah. like has its own challenges, but it 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 is like I can breathe, yeah. which is quite nice. You know, it's I just have to talk about it because it's Hamilton and it remains really like unlike anything any right? Like uh, there it's hard, yeah, you know. I mean, I have a lot of words usually, but how do you describe? You know, other than having guests from Rent on this show and, you know, Daphne mm-hmm. going like, I am just talking about how humbled she is, but it's really hard to process still all these years later what it means to the world, Rent, and to yeah. have been a person who created that. She's like, I'm aware and I'm grateful. And it's it's like beyond language in that way, even though theater is all language. So Hamilton has come into our lives in the last few years as, as another version of that, like something that affects people globally. And you uh, ended up in the center of it. 
in, I mean, these tours are how most people in the world in, in America and then in the world get to see it. Like most people don't get to yeah. New York. Um, so can you talk about how that came into your life and that role, Eliza, and then you mentioned seeing your fiance closing in Puerto Rico. So there's that story. Um, just take us through it, this beautiful, beautiful yeah. chapter of your life. Yeah, it was um, very unexpected. I was living in Anaheim, California at the time that I got the audition because I was working at Disneyland playing Elsa in the Frozen show that they had in California Adventure, which is a really great job really great job. And um, I got the audition and in my head, I've gone in for, <laughs> I've gone in for Wicked 13 times. It's the, the, the boat has passed, but um, when I got the audition for Ham, I thought it was going to be a much similar thing. Like this is a huge blockbuster show. They audition people for years to like groom them to, to, to eventually be in the production. So I was like, all right, I'll audition for the first time and start the journey. When I booked it, I was like so confused <laughs> because I feel like I had been told for years that I was too green for uh -huh. like to lead a show, to be the female lead. And so I, I was just shocked that they were giving me the opportunity. And I obviously was excited. I, I up until that point, I don't think I had professionally played such like, like a leading lady yet. I, mm -hmm. I, I'd made a career on kind of being the girl who comes out for 15 minutes, sings a really big song and then like leaves or like, just like the girlfriend, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so when I went out on the road initially, uh, and honestly throughout, I did it for a year. It was, uh, some of the most pressure I've ever felt doing a show. It's really hard, um, <laughs> to do. Hamilton eight times a week. It's just really hard. Um, I found it to be really hard to sing it and uh, really hard to live in her for for that long and then to also be on the road. Um, obviously, like, I think it really thickened my skin. I think it really taught me the sacrifices you need to make to, to do this job in the way that I would like to do it. Um, and I met my fiance, Edred. He, when I first joined, he was a standby. And so he covered Washington, Hamilton, Burr, and Lafayette Jefferson. And then he ended up taking over full time for Hamilton about four or five months into my contract. And we did the rest of my contract together. And doing it with him was like incredibly special. We weren't together at the time because um, I was with someone else at the time, but. Uh, we became incredibly close and maintained a, a friendship throughout the pandemic. And then, um, and then we got together and he, I've, I've spoken about it before, but he is uh, the kind of, he knows exactly what he wants, which is very refreshing. And so like, when we decided to start our relationship, he was like, well, if we're going to date, we're going to get married. Like, there's not like an in-between here. We're not dating for fun. So it, I'm, we're getting married. So I was like, okay. He's not messing and around. That's how it's going to be. Not at all. Yeah. And so he wasn't wrong. He wasn't bluffing. So um, he did Hamilton for, including the pandemic year, five years on the road. Crazy. Wow. wow. Crazy. He must be so happy. If he Is he home now? He must be so happy to be in the same bed like every well oh, with you and just <laughs> and in the same bed with you uh not to be <laughs> fooled um how does one get put into Hamilton who puts you into the show who did you is there anyone from the original like Joe Mantello was just on I think mm. last week and just learning about like after a certain amount of time who puts people into the show who kind of vets them before he weighs in if he even weighs in you know depending yeah. on the company so how does it work for for it's the angelica tour that you were on yeah yeah how does it work so when i came in i think i came in with like four or five other new people one other new principal and then i believe everybody else was ensemble and um so we would 
we joined when they were in DC at the Kennedy Center. And luckily at the Kennedy Center, they have a beautiful rehearsal studio um, in the same building as the theater. So um, Jacob Guzman and Carly DiNardo, who were the swings at the time and dance captains taught us the show. Um, and it's, you know, we would listen to it through the monitors as the show was going on and then like rehearse along with them. And then all the other, like Edward was a standby at the time. So he would come upstairs and run it with us. And it was to replace in a show. I had never done that before. Um, and it is a very singular experience. It's kind of lonely. Um, and then it kind of feels like you're like truly shot out of a cannon when you do your put in. Cause it just is like, you know, when you do a put in only the people who are being put in are in costume and like everyone else is just like being normal and like messing around. Cause like, of course they are. It's put-ins are hard. If it's not being, if it's not you being put in, they can be tough. And also they're five years in, as you described some of it, yeah. right? Like they've been doing it a really long time. Yeah, exactly. So, and then and my put-in was at the Kennedy center and then I debuted the show in Boston. So doing a put in in a different show than your or a different theater than your debut is also kind of heady. Um, so it was it. And then eventually, like once I joined, then then I think the principals who were there kind of like slowly trickled out and then they brought in the new principals and then it, it, it like slowly becomes a different show. But um, Tommy Kale came to Boston. Um, so did Alex Lackmore. So they were still like very involved. Blankenbuehler still came. Blankenbuehler came up until the end of my run. Um, and Lack also came out a lot. So they were like pretty involved. And I know like in the decision process, they're all, they were all very involved. Um, and then Lynn came out in Detroit, as did like Jeffrey Seller and Tom. Everybody came from Detroit. But, and would you um, know they were going to be there that night? Would you? No, you had it. Yeah, <laughs> everyone, everyone but Andy Blankenbuehler tells you. Andy doesn't tell you, which I actually appreciate. I like it, but everybody else comes to your dressing room and says hi. <laughs> oh, you're here. Are you staying to see the show? Great. Okay, um, well, I just I need one minute. <laughs> well, when Lynn came they sent us an email like four hours before cur curtain that Lynn was coming. And I was like, why would you tell us? And so I texted Edward. I was like, I'm calling out. And he was like, you can't. So I got to the theater like as early as I possibly could. I did all my makeup and I had to do my hair early. And I went and sat backstage like at half hour. So I wouldn't be in the room when so he came around. So he could not find I, you. Exactly. Because I just wanted, I, it just, I don't like to know. And then I'm sitting there like hiding in the dark and I just hear, hey, Hannah Cruz. And I was like, oh, dang it. Found me. He found me. So I was like, okay, okay, go back to your seat. Um, but, it, and then like, he ended up taking us out, uh, the whole cast out to a bar after. And um, I mean, he's so, it, God, that feels like so long ago. Um, but Lynn's the best. I, I love him. And um but then for so, me to see Sufs and see you and Philip Asu, yeah, like when we talked about meta or or like <laughs> mind bending parallel universes craziness. Did you know her before you started working together? No, I didn't know her before Sufs, and um, I was like, I remember getting the cast list for Sufs and being like nervous, like really, she made me the most nervous. Um, and then Pippa ended up being like one of the people I got closest with. Um, and I love her like to, to death. She's, I mean, she's going to be in my wedding. I love her so much. Um, and she's one of my favorite people, but I remember, I think we were talking, uh, about him, just about the experience of playing Eliza. And she, I, she was saying, uh, like at the Kennedy center when they, performed their Skylar sisters she was like god this is so high why is it why are we doing it so high and they were like this is how high it was in the show she's like oh I'm like yeah it's your fault <laughs> it's your fault it's so high because it is really Skylar sisters in particular is very high 
But did you did you know the women playing your sisters before you were cast together in the mm -hmm. show? No, I don't think I knew anybody going into that cast. I don't think. Oh, actually, that's not true. I I came into the show with uh, Taylor Daniels, who we had worked at a coffee shop in Hell's Kitchen like years and years prior together, which is really crazy. <laughs> but otherwise, no, everybody was new to me. If you could go back and like talk to yourself before you started that journey, knowing what you know now, aside from like, it's totally fine to hide backstage before Lin-Manuel <laughs> Miranda is going to be there, but he will find you anyway. Um, and you're going to be great and you're going to be fine. Like what are thoughts, you know, you have that you might share with yourself in, in the past? Hmm. Honestly, I like the thing that comes to my mind is like, <laughs> don't uh, take better care of yourself in the way of like, don't drink. I, I feel like I was so like lonely and the show made me so sad all the time. Like I would come home and just be like so bereft and it would take me hours to get out of it. And so I would just like have a drink every night and it just never made it better. And it took me a couple more years to figure out that like that wasn't the way to do it. And I was still, I mean, I was still relatively young on that tour. Um, but I think I would have given myself more grace if I hadn't like been treating my body kind of poorly. Um, and you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I, and I, I think that the experience, as painful as it was, sometimes was kind of invaluable because I think. Obviously, like uh, everything we go th through is the building block that makes us who we are now. Um, but I think I could have made it a little easier on myself. When you think about when you think about ways in which Hannah and Robin, this character you're playing now, intersect, you know, you were saying earlier on, you I mean, obviously, you, it sounds like the material just fit you so well like sat in your voice and your heart in a way that just made sense to you as you now do the show more and more what what is it about this young woman in in the world that she's in that really speaks to you and and what do you hope audiences get out of this show and see is there like a real magazine that this is loosely based on okay well it have you seen shattered glass it's a movie about stephen glass the writer of the new republic who um it was revealed that he had fabricated almost all of his articles uh -huh. he, he then wrote a novel based on it called The Fabulous, which um not very good, but um it's it's like loosely it's it's uh it's a kind of a composite character. Um and if you talk to Daisy about it, she I mean they've done like hours and hours and hours and days and days and days of research. But um there's like a bunch of journalists who were found out to have been doing this like in this time period specifically. Um but I wow. always kind of think harken it back to the to the new republic um and what i hope audiences take from this show i think i think there is um some really interesting uh or to be mined from truth the difference between truth and fact um like i mean of course, right now, when we're so inundated with information all the time. And I think that like the Ethans of today skate by a lot easier because there's just so much information that it's hard to understand or even take the time to suss out what is true and what is not. Or, I mean, truth can be subjective. And it, it's just, it's a really interesting question. And I think that this show is in opposition to Stephen Glass, who I think it's kind of clear that like 
he wasn't even a very good writer. So one of the lines I say to Ethan at the end, I don't want to give anything away, but um, he's he, Ethan is a good writer. He he was led astray by other factors, but like the core, like the skill is there. And so it's it's I think our show is super nuanced and interesting and like crunchy because you feel bad for this kid who's like done a bad thing. And yeah. then it makes me think of like forgiveness and because mistakes can be made and just writing people off because of it is not like, is that the right thing to do? Or is it like you made a mistake? How do we remedy that mistake? And how do we rehabilitate you? Um, so I think it's, I love, I mean, Sherm and Jason and Jay-Z have done such a good job of like, of exposing the human part of Ethan because it's not just, you don't end the show and you're just like, oh, I hate him. You may hate him, but there's also like an empathy there that can't be ignored. Cause it's a person yeah. and it's really hard to like, and a young I don't know, person. I've, Yes, a young, and person, a young exactly. person. And and also it's really hard because it's almost as if Jonathan Mark Sherman cast a uh theatrical version of himself in the show. <laughs> you watch the show, like this is crazy, this is hilarious, um, and great. And and it all works. And there's also, you know, it's really exciting to see Scott Bakula back on stage. I know. He's wonderful in audiences. It's funny. A lot of people know who he is. A lot of people aren't sure who he is, but there's this kind of electric like movie star thing that happens when yes. he appears. It's like, it's so hard to describe why that is. Like there's something in the ether when he arrives. Cause I could tell, you know, depending on your age and your relationship to television in general, yeah. um, you, you know who he is or he, you don't, but he's fantastic in this part You're, the entire ensemble is um equal parts uh heartbreaking and breathtaking and and the talent is extraordinary and and it does feel really new like you do feel like you're seeing new work um yeah. you know you were saying that that you know it may or may not be frozen or you know it, it kind of came in from new york stage and film like pretty ready to go yeah. but there's something it also feels incredibly new. MCC has built such an extraordinary theater. I just saw Gavin's show, Walk On Through. Oh I don't God. know if you got to so see good. it. Yes. Yeah. Like, so to come from, you know, the week before seeing that to seeing your show. And for me, meeting like this new generation like you of extraordinary talent who I've been watching and now get to know your story is just... um it's really satisfying and wonderful. And you, you know, if there was a role that prepared you for leading this company, I feel like Eliza is, you know, I mean, there, there, there's kind of some similarities between these two roles in some way. I mean, you're not yeah. dealing with, you know, what it is to lose a child, obviously, and, and yeah. at a, a whole other level, but there is something about carrying the weight of the morality and integrity, like, like Robin has such tremendous integrity. And you, and you do that in softs also, you know, just carry the torch for what's right without ever being obnoxious it's a hard it's hard <laughs> you're just brilliant at it you're just so and your voice is just um uniquely beautiful and also it, I always feel when I see you like you're having a great time and it's really infectious <laughs> to be with someone who truly loves what they do um it makes everyone want to be better and uh, show up like just show up. You make people want to show up. That's the word on the street. People want to show up and do their best because Hannah is. So thank you for all of that and all that you have ahead. By the way, with everything going on, um, and I saw your post on Instagram about your engagement. Do you know when you're getting married? Yeah, we um we have a date August 26th. I'm very excited. <laughs> it's very exciting. All right. Well, I'm going to make you share another little known fact beyond when you are getting married. Um, 
Is there a little known fact about Hannah Cruz that you can share? I mean, <laughs> it seems like very little, but um, today I don't have a lot of days off coming up because um, I'm about to do double duty with stuffs and, um, but on my days off, like one of my favorite things to do is bake. And I'm so excited today. I'm making these like minty lime bars. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. That's like what I've looked forward to all week. <laughs> so that's my little known fact. Well, some of your cast members tomorrow may be really happy if you bring some of them in for them. <laughs> yeah, I try and yeah, yeah. share share the goodies. Um, Hannah, what a moment. I'm meeting you at like a really incredible moment. There's this intersection of all the hard work you've done and the community seeing it and it's coming together in this incredible way. So congratulations on everything. Thank you for being on this podcast. I'm so thrilled to get to talk to you today. And I just wish you, you just all the, all the, all the, all the best with everything. Thank you. It's really an honor for me to be here and to talk to you. So thank you. You're welcome. All right. Until next time.